We'll start off with Tap Gesture Handler in an animated view from Reanimated already set up with some styling to make it look like an orange box. In order to get going, we need to destructure some stuff from Animated. So we're gonna say const equals animated, and we're gonna pull off value, clock, event, and that'll be it for now. We first need an animated value that we're gonna call gesture state. So I'm gonna say new value, negative one, and this is gonna hold on to the gesture state from the tap gesture handler, whether it's active or it's ended. And then the next thing we're gonna do is set up a clock. The clock will be used to drive our animations. It will basically create something that ticks on the native side every roughly 16 milliseconds. So we say clock equals new clock. And then we need to create an event for our tap gesture handler. So say on state change is equal to event. And with event, it will take an array. So it will then destructure the arguments that this callback call is called with. It is just called with a single event with a native event property. And tap gesture handler from React Native gesture handler will then have a special state, which will pass to gesture state. And so this gesture state will be receiving the state of the tap gesture handler whenever that changes. We can wire that up now. So we'll say on handler state change is equal to the this dot on state change. So now we can get into the meat of our operation with a timing opacity animation. So we're going to create an opacity and call run opacity timer. Now this is a function we haven't created yet, but we're going to pass in our clock as well as our this dot gesture state. So that doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and create it. So you can say const run opacity timer. And this will receive our clock and our gesture state. And so the first thing we need to do is set up our configuration for our clock. So we're going to say const state. And it takes four particular animated values. The first one will be finished. So say new value is zero. And this one will be set once the animation has been completed. Then we'll set our position, which will say new value of zero. This is going to hold on to the transition from the two value of the timing to the uh, position that it's currently at. So it'll start at zero and then translate and animate stepping at the correct intervals to the two value. Then we'll have our time. And then our frame time, which for our purposes is not important. But it is essentially holding on to the current frame of time over the current progress that the animation is making. We'll then need to set up our configuration for our timing animation. So we'll say const config, and we'll need to do a duration. So we'll say duration of 300. Then we'll do a two value, which we'll set to negative one. And then we also need to set up easing. So we'll say easing, which we'll do an easing in out with an easing ease. So because of the way that reanimated works and it's a declarative nature that sends over everything over the bridge just once and then handles everything natively so there's not a lot of chat over the bridge back and forth, we need to import a lot of these comparison and instructions for the animation. So we're gonna pull in block, condition, and, equal, not equal, set, start clock, timing, stop clock, as well as interpolate. With all of these imported, we can finally set up our return value for our opacity. So we're gonna return a block of conditions. So we're gonna say return block, which takes an array of things. And the order at which these are constructed don't really matter. All that matters is that the last value of this array block is the value that's gonna be fed to opacity. 
So that means it's gonna to need to be between zero and one, whatever we happen to put in this last slot. So we're gonna first set up our timing. So we're gonna say timing, which takes our clock that we passed in, as well as our state that we set up for the clock, as well as the configuration for our timing animation. The next thing we need to do is set up a condition for when the timing animation and the clock has been completed. So we need to say condition when the state is completed, then we need to call stop clock. And make sure you add comma here so we have valid JavaScripts. And now that we have our timing and our condition for finishing set up, we need to define a animation for when we press on it. So when we press on it, what we want to happen is for it to slowly fade out over a duration of 300. However, at any point that we release it, we want it to fade back to our full opacity of one. So we need to do that with a condition block. And we need to do that with a condition block based upon the state of our gesture. But we also need to utilize our config2 value because what happens is when you have a condition, it will look at all the nodes that are depending on that particular thing. And every time the clock changes, that condition will be reevaluated. So how we're gonna have to set this up is we're gonna say condition, and then we'll use an and statement. And whatever comes after the and statement or after the in the second argument here is gonna be what is evaluated for um, whenever this evaluates to true. And so what we want to do is then do a set state.finished to zero. So we want to clear out that the animation has been completed. Then we want to do a set to a state.time of zero. So we're resetting the animation. And we're going to state.frametime to zero because that's also going to reset the progress of the frame. Then we're going to set our config.2 value to one. As you can see here, we started with negative one. We'll get to that in a second. And then we're going to start our clock. So we'll pass in our clock. And then add a comma here so we don't break everything. And so our two comparisons are going to be if the gesture state is equal to state.began. So once the tap has happened, and then also when config.2 value doesn't equal one. So you see we're setting our config value in here to one because, because this block is depending on clock, this will always run. So if we didn't add this not equals to one clause, then our animation would just do nothing. So if we add a comma here, we can reload this and everything will work. Now, if we pass this, so this is being returned to our opacity, so we can add this here. So we'll say opacity, this dot opacity, and nothing's gonna happen because if you look, our last thing is returned is our state dot finished. And then we call stop clock, which this will eventually evaluate to zero. So what we want to do then is put the last thing here as our state dot position. However, our state.position is going to start at zero, and we want our button to show up in the beginning. And so what we need to do is use our interpolate. We'll also bring in extrapolate here just to solidify our animation. So we're going to say interpolate, and we're just going to flip our value. So when we say state.position, we're just going to take an object, and we're going to define our input range. And this is going to be the input of values that we expect state.position to be. So in this case, we expect it to be anywhere between zero and one. And then we want to flip that, say output range. When our initial start state.position is zero, like it is in the beginning, we want to output one. And when it's at one, we want it to be zero. And then we will add our extrapolate with our extrapolate.clamp. What this will do is just always say that it goes between zero and one and never beyond one or zero. And as you can see that we are at state position zero and our opacity is now one. So now if we go ahead and press on this, we can see that it animates out, but it does not animate in. So let's fix that. We need to do the same thing that we've done here, but for when the tap ends. So we're gonna copy this and instead of pecan, we say end. 
and instead of the two value, which we want to animate our position back to zero. So we're going to say zero here and config that two value zero here, and then we're going to start our clock. So now if we refresh, we have the complete animation where we'll animate our two value of one, which with our interpolation will be flipped to zero, or when we animate back to zero, which is our starting position, we'll go back to an opacity of one. So we press and then release, it comes right back. 